Good morning, and welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading others to experience God's love, know Jesus Christ, and grow in his image. I am Pastor Wynn, and I'll be leading us through this contemplative service that we do in the style of Tizay. My prayer for you is that you can set aside distractions of the outside world, take a deep breath in, and breathe out, and simply be present for yourself, for God, for the nurture of your spirit as the Holy Spirit abides in you. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we are so grateful for all the ways you are present with us and the ways we have now to be present with you. We call upon your spirit, Lord, now to open our ears, to hear your word, to open our eyes, to see the glory that you have all around us, to open our minds, to learn what it is you would have us to know this day so that in our spirits and in our living, we may be offerings of the Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. I invite you now, my sisters and my brothers, to take a deep breath in and breathe out and receive this word from God for you today. I will read through these verses from the Gospel of Matthew three times to give you an opportunity to listen for how God is speaking to you, what it is God needs you to hear that could be a word that captures your attention, it could be a picture in your mind's eye, it could be a stirring of a memory or a sense of calling for you now as God speaks with you. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age.
And again, listen for this word from God as a sense of how Christ is present for you now through it in whatever way it is you're receiving this word. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear now a third time this word from Jesus to us, to all his disciples from the Gospel of Matthew. Acknowledge to God, give your thanks in prayer for however it is you have a sense of his presence or a sense of his command in your life. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. As we come now to a time of prayer, consider all of the things that are on your mind, things that are heavy in your heart, things that are weighing down in your spirit. Be mindful of what it is you need to speak out loud to God or what you need to share with us. You can turn in a prayer request, you can make a note in the comments, or you can reach out to any of us at the church to let us know how we can be in prayer for you. But in this very time that we have together now, lift up to God your concerns, lift up to God your celebrations, be open and honest with the God who is present with you now, listening, and I invite you to be present with the God right now who has something to say to you in this time of prayer. Let us breathe and pray.
Holy and loving God, in this time that we have now, let it be time with you. Open us up, Lord, to all the ways that we have opportunity to receive you now. Give us a sense of your presence all around us, either in a still, small voice, or a gentle word, or just a sense that you are sitting right beside us as we pray, as we talk with you now. Lord, be in the minds of all of my sisters and brothers to give them a sense once more of who they are as your sons and daughters. Recall us to ourselves, God, as your precious and beloved children. And in that claiming, help us, God, to have a clarity in what that means for how you are leading us in this world. Reveal to us a new command for our lives. Where you have seen us fall astray, call us back gently and open us to receive your forgiveness as we confess the ways we have fallen short of the path you've laid out for us. Help us to see a light shining on that path so it is obvious to us the way you are calling us to go. Be with us, Lord, in the ways we feel that the task before us is impossible. Help us to see that you have equipped us for just what we need to endure all that the world brings and all of the struggles that we find ourselves in. God, you see that our minds become easily distracted in the ways that we are tempted, in the ways that we are hurt, in the ways that we feel like we are rejected or despised. Give us a right spirit, God, so that we do not offer what the world has offered to us, but instead we pour out the love and peace, the mercy and grace of Christ. We know, Lord, that the world comes with many troubles, but we may come with the peace of the Holy Spirit, that peace that we do not understand, but that fills us to overflowing so that we may be bearers of peace in the world that knows so much conflict and tension. Let us not move in a way of strife, but instead move in a way of love so that by our actions, by our words, by all of our deeds and everything that we share, people may come to see an offering of Christ through us. Guide us now as we struggle and strive to follow Jesus and to invite others to do the same as we join our voices together in the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
yourself to hear this word from God and to hear a message from God for you this very day. I invite you to get your body settled, get into a comfortable position, breathe in and breathe out. You can close your eyes if you just want to listen, or of course you can read the words on the screen. But prepare yourself for what it is that the scripture is speaking to you now as God writes a letter into our lives from 1 Thessalonians. Know that as long as there have been followers of Jesus, there has been his authority guiding our lives in faith and hope, in doubt and struggles. Before there was even a church called Christian, Jesus assured his followers he would be with them always to the end of the age. And we have needed to constantly remind ourselves of that truth of his presence for the work he has tasked us to do. Obey his commands to us and teach others to do the same so that we may live as disciples and make disciples. Hear these words now for the church in Thessalonia as they strove toward this calling. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers. As you reflect on this word, close your eyes and think about what you know of the Bible story. How has God chosen his beloved who was called by God for his good purposes that you read of in the scripture? As you think of those people in the scripture, early church leaders, apostles and disciples, prophets, for whom in scripture do you give thanks? Thanks for sharing the love of God and the good news of Jesus Christ for you. What did those people you've come to know from the Bible do for which you are now grateful? As you consider these imitators of the Lord, what was it about them that pointed to Jesus in their work of faith and labor and love and steadfastness of hope? How were they examples for other believers of Jesus Christ? Listen again to this word from Thessalonians with an ear for how your church today would receive it if it was written for us. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. 
For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers. Do you recognize anyone from Bethany or another church you call home that this letter could have been written for? As you think about these church members and visitors, what have these sisters or brothers of yours done here that reveal God in their works of faith and labors of love? What have you witnessed from them? Being a follower of Jesus, being a faithful member, living the church outside these walls is not an easy thing. Where have you witnessed or where have you yourself experienced persecution? And where have you been able to see a persistence in steadfastness in spite of it? Could this letter from 1 Thessalonians be written to you? Could it be written to you for your sharing of the gospel, for you being the message, for you being the imitator of your mentors in the faith and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I invite you now to spend some time praying about those people you know whom you could encourage, people that you could write a letter to to express your thanks for them in sharing faith, in sharing Christ. Pray for those people and then offer that word to those sisters and brothers by sending them a letter or an email or a text. Be in prayer too for how you can live into this affirmation as a follower of Jesus.
As always, it is such a joy to be in worship with you and like you, I long to be in person with you in the chapel. We keep praying for that day to come where we can have our in-person reunion. Uh, until then, it is so good to be connecting with you in whatever way we can. And I want to make sure that you connect with us. You can see four links on your screen that are ways you can do that. First, by checking in. Let us know that you were here, uh, whatever time that was, by sharing your uh, information with us, especially if you're a member, make sure we have updates in your contact information so we can keep our records up to date uh, as you check in. We want to make sure that you know that as the Spirit moves you to share your tithes and your offerings, you can do that at the giving link. And we covet here in your prayers, knowing how we can be in that conversation with you and with God. So go to our prayer page and turn in a prayer request as you have need. Uh, take the time to look at our website and just explore different events that are coming up and ministries and small groups that you can be engaging with as we continue in this life of the faith. We do that wherever we are. And so as we leave from this place... I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to go out from here knowing that even if we're not leaving the space together, we are together in spirit and God's spirit abiding in us. You are always accompanied by God who is present with you as your Father in heaven, by God who comes as the Son who saves our lives and the Holy Spirit who equips those lives to go and bear his peace. Go out and do that very thing now in the name of God. Amen.